So this video is going to be photosynthesis light dependent reaction. Keep in mind that in the description there's a link to these slides. There's in this video I'm going to attempt to describe this mess in front of you here on the title slide. Right now it may not make a lot of sense. Hopefully by the end or maybe re-watching this video a couple times you'll begin to understand some of the complexities here and it won't seem so daunting as it does right now. So moving on, our light dependent reaction, there's protein complexes. Uh, I found another great link to some animations here. You're welcome to check that out. We're looking at photosystem two, uh, plastoquinin, cytochrome, photosystem one, ferrodoxin, and ATP synthase are some of the protein complexes we're going to be discussing here. It's going to help you to understand what's going on through this process. Keep in mind that while this might seem very complex, we are all dealing with the um, chloroplast here. Keep in mind the stroma is that aqueous liquid, and the thylakoid lumen is that inner portion here of the disc, and it shows it right here also. We're going to be looking at explaining what's going on right here. Okay, so to start with, let's look at an exploded view here of the light-dependent reaction, just an overview. For photosystem 2, excited electron travels along a series of proteins, that's what we see here. This electron transport system uses energy from the electron to pump hydrogen ions across the membrane. To the inner thylakoid. This is our thylakoid space. A pigment molecule, photosystem 1, accepts an electron, and we're using ATP synthase here to generate ADP to, into ATP. So we're going to follow this um, electron along. Remember, this is a chain because it only occurs in one direction. So starting with first, photosynthesis. Well, photo meaning light, and we're looking at a photon of light energy. Wavelength of light, that's the source of the initial energy. We see our white light here getting separated out by our prism into our different colors. Notice those colors have different wavelengths, and they occur always in the same Regibiv order. Remember, keep in mind this is visible light. We're looking here at other forms of different wavelengths here. Visible light is a very small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. And here's a wonderful rainbow, it's really a double rainbow here. Light is given off when an electron jumps down one of its levels there, or more. So photosystem 2. Now keep in mind that we do start with photosystem 2. There's photosystem 1 that comes later. Photosystem 1 was first discovered, and actually then they found this other photosystem, so this is why it's labeled like this. But photosystem 2 is what we're going to start with. Light energy is absorbed by the chlorophyll molecule and passed along a pathway to other chlorophyll molecules. The energy um, in this molecule, chlorophyll, is found in the reaction center. This energy excites one of its electrons and leaves a molecule to be transferred to the nearby primary electron acceptor. So we have this electron here. This electron comes from splitting of a molecule of water. We see oxygen is giving off as a byproduct, so are hydrogen ions and an electron, and that electron is absorbing this light energy and excited, we call it, and jumping up a level. Now it's not just passed off and left to go and release its energy, it's through a sequence of steps when this electron drops down in energy we're going to harness that. So we have our initial electron ground state, we excite it to the excited state, we're giving it its energy. And we're trying to maximize this energy. This is the thylakoid membrane, keep in mind where the stroma is and where the thylakoid space here. Notice our phospholipid bilayer here. Now capturing light energy in the reaction center, different molecules utilize different wavelengths of light. Ultimately light energy is channeled to the reaction center. So we see our um, carotenoids here, our chlorophyll B or chlorophyll A, utilizing multiple wavelengths of light energy that the sun is producing. To give an example of some of this, it's called an antenna complex. And we see chlorophyll B, beta carotene you might be familiar with, um, it's in carrots lycopins in tomatoes, we have our chlorophyll A. Now that electron is coming from our water molecule, and this is going to what's called ETS. This electron is going to the electron transport system. Remember, that's a one-direction chain-like system. We split our water molecules. So we're getting our oxygen, and we're also getting hydrogen ions. Now please remember hydrogen ions increasing the amount of hydrogen ions will increase the acidity or decrease the pH here. So these hydrogen ions are located to the lumen or thylakoid interior. Two water molecules, water molecules result in an oxygen molecule being released. You see that evident here. 
So it takes two of our H2Os to get our O2 molecule. Now looking at photosystem 2, abbreviated PS2, or P680, because it's absorbing 680 nanometers wavelength. It's the reaction center that increases electrons' energy to the excited state. This high energy state is unstable, and the energy level is lowered through a controlled sequence of steps, which we're going to learn about. Keep in mind and remember that when we split our water, we're getting hydrogen ions. So notice the pH of our thylakoid interior is 4, acidic, and our stroma here, the outside, is a pH of 8, slightly basic. In photosystem 2 is where we start. We're initially getting our electron here from our water, exciting it with wavelengths of energy from the sun, in this case. Um, plastoquinone here, PQ, is how it's represented here. It's a mobile um, protein, and it's the start of the electron transport system. It moves within the membrane, within this lipid bilayer and ultimately passes the electrons off to the next step. So we excite our electron, we're passing it here to this mobile carrier, and this is carrying this high energy electron to the next step. If we didn't have this carrier, this electron would just release its energy randomly, it would not be able to be captured and utilized for the photosynthetic process. Cytochrome complex, it contains iron, kind of put a picture here of a iron chain, this moves protons or hydrogen ions across the thylakoid membrane. So this requires energy. This is active transport, taking this hydrogen, which is in low concentrations here, and moving it across this barrier, this phospholipid bilayer, and concentrating it here. Again, remember our pH here is acidic, a pH of 4, and the strong is a pH of 8, slightly basic. And that's occurring through a constant movement of those hydrogen ions, also called protons. Uh, plastocyanin. This carries electrons from the cytochrome. It's a mobile carrier. If you see it's represented here. And it delivers electrons to photosystem 1. So it's a mobile carrier. Try to, to remember that. Try to put a picture of an aircraft carrier here. Mobile carrier. And we're looking right here. So we've gone through our photosystem 2. We've ex primary um, electron acceptor, plastocyanin. Then we're going to our cytochrome, moving our electrons, I'm sorry, our hydrogens across with the energy from the electron. And now we're going to photosystem 1. So in photosystem 1, it's similar to photosystem 2. Um, this is photosystem 1 down here, and this is photosystem 1 for comparison. The electron is re-energized um, from photons of light energy through the reaction center, and now we're transferring it to ferrodoxin. So this just gives you, it's called, it's called P700. It's a slightly different wavelength of light. We see here our electron being passed off, light energy here, exciting that electron. You notice photosystem 1 is simpler than photosystem 2 because there's no water that's being broken. The electrons that were separated out from this original water molecule are being passed along. And this is the same electron being re-energized here. And this kind of gives you a graphical representation of this re-energizing re that occurs. So electrons are energized after absorbing energy from the light. Then, as part of the electron transport chain, the energy is released to a controlled manner and able to perform necessary plant functions. This happens twice with each photosystem utilizing a different wavelength. So you see here photosystem 2, taking our electrons from the initial splitting of water, energizing it up, passing it down a sequence of steps, allowing it to do work, in this case moving protons or hydrogen ions, and then if it reaches photosystem 1, re-energizes itself with another photon, bringing it up, and then we're going to utilize those steps again. So this is what we call the energizing electrons. Bring it up, and then as it comes down, we're kind of controlling and utilizing that energy. Ferrodoxin, FD, and NADP reductase, and FR, FNRs, we're located here now. So keep in mind, we're like, look at the thylakoid, look where the stroma is. We've gone through photosystem 2 and the splitting of water. They're re-energizing with light energy. Now we're looking at passing those electrons off. We're moving our hydrogen ions across, concentrating them in the lumen. We just left photosystem 2, remember photosystem, absorbing light energy, and now we're getting to here. We're transferring those electrons and a hydrogen ion. So creating a proton and hydrogen ion gradient, concentration of hydrogen ions in the lumen increases the acidity. Remember, increasing acidity decreases the pH. This gradient naturally would like to diffuse across the membrane and even out the concentrations. This generates an energy potential. 
Hydrogen ions, though, can only pass through this protein structure called ATP synthase. And this is, we see our cytochrome here moving them across. They're only allowed to pass back over through the process of ATP synthase. And as they do move over, ideally with more energy, the cytochrome will pull these back to try to maintain this gradient. Now what ATP synthase actually is, hanging out over there, uh, this hydrogen ion gradient generates from the electron transport chain and is used to run ATP synthase. The proton flow results in ADP, adenosine diphosphate, being converted to ATP. And we see here our hydrogen ion moving across. ATP synthase, the reason why I can show this little animation here, it actually does rotate and turn. And it is converting ADP to ATP. It's grabbing another um, phosphate and joining it on from diphosphate to triphosphate, our high energy molecule necessary for the cell to perform its functions. Now, hopefully, looking here, I pose the question, does this make sense now? And initially, I know you're probably going to say no. It is presented a little bit differently, but I will welcome you to pause the video and take a look at what everything is labeled and see if you can describe what's going on. Look at water molecules, our photosystem 2, photosystem 1, where the hydrogen ions are occurring. Ultimately, we're getting our NADPH and our ATP. So, again, our stroma and our lumen, keep in mind where everything is, where the electrons are being passed off. So, again, pause the video here and see if you can explain this to yourself. Hopefully, after you explain that, it makes a little bit more sense now. But you may be wondering, all we generate is ATP, which is the energy component of the reaction, and A. NADPH, which is the terminal electron acceptor. That's where the electron goes. That was originally split from the water. But no sugars were made. So when does this happen? Right? Doesn't photosynthesis create sugars? Well, the answer is going to be the Calvin cycle, or the light-independent reaction. And there will be other videos on that. This entire description here was simply the light-dependent reaction. And while the components ATP and NADPH are necessary for the Calvin cycle, uh, the Calvin cycle itself does not require light energy directly. That's going to be in a subsequent video, and that is where we're going to be using our CO2, our NADPH, our, N our ATP, and ultimately we'll be generating that sugar molecule to allow there to be stored form of energy in a chemical form that originated from an energy or light form.